Hey guys, this is Lockie, and this is the seventh part of my VR tutorial series. Here's what we're going to be making in this episode. Okay, so this is the end result. Um, you can teleport around by pointing and touching the touchpad. Uh, you can interact the same with old objects, but now when you go too far away from them, uh, which we'll see in a second, it actually disconnects. So you can see how it's more than about half a meter away from it, so it suddenly stops following it. And it does that the same with the door, but you don't really need to see that at the moment. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is add the teleporters. Uh, to do that, you just need to grab both your controllers, uh, add a SteamVR teleporter component. Um, we won't use the ones above just because they're sort of newer and harder to implement, but this will do for now. Uh, it's basically just a simple point and, cli uh, point and click. So um, yeah, just enable teleport on click, uh, keep the teleport type the same. Double click to open it up, and we're going to change trigger clicked to pad clicked. So basically, um, it just gets activated by the pad instead of the trigger, so we can use the trigger for other things like shooting. So save that, and now what we'll do is open up the held object script. Uh, first, what I need to do is add a variable. Um, we'll call this one public float disconnect distance. We'll initialize it at zero and we'll just assume that things won't disconnect. Um, and basically what this will be is it'll just be um, how far away your controller needs to go from the object or from the outside of the object to disconnect pretty much. So it's fairly self-explanatory. Uh, next what we need to do is go down to the update function um, and we're going to add a few lines here. So, if disconnect distance is greater than zero, that just makes it so that if it is greater than zero, so we actually want it to disconnect at some point, because if it was zero, then it would just disconnect all the time, it would be pointless. So, if uh, basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to check if the distance from your controller to the nearest point on the outside of the bounds is greater or less than the distance and if it's less than it then you'll just keep holding it otherwise you'll drop it but also um it actually goes to the outside of the bounds rather than anywhere inside of the bounds so you need to also check if it's inside of it otherwise because if you go too far inside of it say it's a really big object then it will disconnect as well so if not get component collider dot bounds dot contains parent dot transform dot position and I'll just start a new line here um, vector three dot distance get component collider dot bounds dot closest point Parent dot transform dot position. Actually, what's this? Um, that doesn't seem right. Wait a second. Um, bounds dot closest point. We don't need to add two two of those. That's fine. Um, and then do the parent dot transform dot position. I think we've got some uh, bracket problems, but I can fix that in a minute. Uh, is greater than disconnected distance. So we'll remove that. Um, where is the starting one? Okay, so starts there. We've got one too many, I'm guessing. Um, well, I've changed that to an or actually because we only make it so that it has to be inside of it or um, otherwise. So we um, okay, just not closing it here. Actually, no, we just... Um, yeah, right here. Okay, we're good to go. Uh, now we just need to open up those brackets. I'll just bring this to a new line just so we can see it all. Uh, then what we need to do is just invoke drop. Um, uh, I guess it's drop. Um, there. 
think that's what it's called. Yep, okay, good. Um, just going to have a bit of a read over it. Um, just try to make sense of it if you can because it is pretty simple. Um, so yeah, just getting the collider, uh, getting its bounds, and then checking if it contains the um, the controller position. And if that happens, then you don't even need to read the second part. But if it isn't inside of it, then if the distance from the closest point on the bounds to the parent or the controller position, um, that just gets the distance. And then if it's greater than the disconnect distance, then you'll drop it. So um, yeah, actually also, yeah, that is an inverted one. So that just swaps it around. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's it for this script. So actually, no, we've got a few more things. Um, pick up, we'll add parent, uh, didn't add a new line, parent dot controller dot trigger haptic pulse 3999. So what this will do is this will just make it so when you pick something up, uh, it triggers a haptic pulse, which will, for some reason, it only goes up to 3,099. Uh, 3,999 and that's what I've found but apparently it goes at 4,000 but I'll just leave it at this because that's what I know it works. Um, make sure you put the second part before the part that says parent equals null and do a null reference check. So parent does not equal null because I have had an error where it'll just go through. I'm not sure where it would be null if it's getting dropped but I guess that could just make sense if you unclick it and you don't have anything. But, um, yep, I think that's it for this script. Okay, so that'll introduce haptics for when you like um, pick up or drop an object. But we actually want to add it so that when you put your hand over an object or away from an object, like before you actually pick it up, it also vibrates so you can know when you should pick it up. So we're going to do that by getting all the colliders a bit earlier outside of the if statement. Um, so just put that right there. Um, then what we're going to do is create a for each statement. So int current count equals zero, so current count of objects. Um, then for each collider call in calls if held object equals equals null. Um, which it should be considering it's in this section, but you never know. Um, and call dot get component held object does not equal null. And get component held object dot parent equals null. Then we'll do this. Uh, you might have noticed it's the exact same line as down here, so you could have just copied that, but I just felt like typing again for some reason. Um, not sure what the big error is there, so I guess we will just copy it. Um, what is it? Left hand side. Held object. I'm obviously doing. Yep, okay. There. Um, now inside of there, what you want to do is actually just add the current count. Um, just do current count plus plus. And what that'll do is it'll just gradually, like for every object that does qualify as something you could pick up, it just adds a count to that. And then if current count does not equal, actually we've got to create a new variable. Um, so we'll do int previous count equals zero. Um, so yeah, just go back down to there. If current count does not equal proof count, um, then controller dot controller dot trigger haptic pulse three thousand nine hundred ninety nine so right under that what we'll do is we'll set the previous count uh, previous count the current count and now what will happen is basically um whenever you put something whenever you put your hand over something or take it away from something it'll change the number of things that you had your hand over before and whenever that's different it vibrates so It'll vibrate for like when you put your hand on something, so then you can know to pick it up, and it just, it basically just tells you whether you can pick up something or not. So uh, I think that's all the code for now. Okay, so open up Unity, and we're going to initialize some variables. So select your uh, draw. Um, just make sure you've got the actual sort of draw part. 
um, then select the held object and set the disconnect distance to 0 0.5. You can set that to whatever you want, but I've just found that that works pretty well. And select your drawer or your door as well. Uh, actually, select the door part again and set the disconnect distance to 0 0.5. Uh, this might be slightly different from yours because I forgot to save last time, but yeah, um, it should function the same. So we're actually going to give this a play now and it should work. Okay, so a tiny little mistake that I've just found. Um, open up the hand script and at the end of the if statement inside of the for each loop, um, just do col dot get component parent uh, dot get component held object dot parent. So that should be everything. Okay, so one more minor error. Just change this from or to and. Uh, that's it for this tutorial. Um, if you have any ideas for the next few ones, or just series, anything really, just drop them in the comments. I'll probably get to it at some point. Uh, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and check out some of my other videos. If you haven't already, subscribe and enable notifications so you can know whenever I upload. See you in the next video.